What's up? What's up? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another edition of the Boxing Voice Radio. I'm joined alongside Ringwalk Danny and former champion Mario Barrios. What's going on, guys? Welcome. Champ, thank you for joining us. I know we've been trying to get to uh, welcome not just to Vegas, but uh, to the Blue Wire Studios. How are you? I'm good, man. Um, you know, I always appreciate you guys. i um, been here in Vegas now. Probably uh, a month or two, just uh, out here getting work. And um, so, I mean, you know, that's been cool. Just getting that, like, change of scenery and everything that I was used to. And, um, I mean, it, it looks like Vegas is going to be the spot where I'm, I'm going to be doing um, my my training camps and everything. That's what's up, man. Uh, yeah, I want to go back to the beginning, man. I, I feel like it's been so long um, following your career and telling our audience about Mario Barrios. I remember, I don't even know how I got in touch with your dad or your dad got in touch with me. And, and uh, you know, you had already been at this. Maybe a lot of people don't know. Like, you were already a professional before you actually got with Al Heyman. Uh, you and your dad were doing this alone. And I remember you getting with Al and then the transition to Virgil Hunter and going to the Bay and, you know, just watching you mature and, and, and grow as a fighter and then becoming a champ and getting some big fights, man. Uh, how do you feel looking back on your career? I know you're not done, but do you feel satisfied, accomplished? What words would you use to, I guess, you know, sum up your career thus far? Uh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm super stoked. You know, anytime I'm able to look back on, on, on everything, you know, that was able to unfold for me, you know. I mean, from um from the beginning, you know, even going pro as you know, back in San Antonio, it kind of seemed like a kind of just like a dream. And then you know, fast forward nine years now, I've been pro. You know, um, well, former world champion now. You know, I had um, I've had tremendous um, accomplishments. You know, in this sport, and it's it's been awesome, man. Uh, you know, I'm I'm just grateful. You know, for the uh, for everything you know, along this journey. For sure, for sure. So obviously your father started you off, then you transitioned into Virgil, and that seemed like, you know, the relationship you were going to finish your career with. Now you're with Bob Santos, who's the new hot trainer. Uh, how'd that, I guess, um, introduction come about? And did you leave Virgil because it's just his old age? I know he was coming out less and less. So did that have anything to do with it, or did you just want a new, a new look and change of environment? I really just wanted to, you know, change of environment, and uh, you know, and the thing is too. I mean, Bob has always been part of my team. Bob has, Bob was always, you know, the 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 head in my corner um, before we started working with Verge. Uh, the first few times I went out there to the Bay Area, it was actually, you know, because I was finishing my camps with uh, with Bob Santos out there in uh, San Jose, and uh, you know, that's when um, I met Joey here, uh, his brother Bobby, um, Bob's wife uh, Diana. And, um, you know, that's when they started to become family, um, you know, to me, like super early. You know, I was like 20, 21. And, um, and then it was like a year or two after that was when, you know, we started working on The Verge. And, um, you know, we just so happened to be, in, um, you know, in the same area over there in the, the East Bay. But, um, you know, now, you know, I'm um, back working with uh, Bob here in Vegas. Um, and we're actually we're, we're also bringing my my sister um, on board. You know, she, she's going to be uh, working uh, working in my corners. So I'm super stoked about that. You know, oh, so she's going to be in your corner. Yeah, yeah. She's, okay, because yeah. I know she's a form a fighter. I didn't know if she was, you know, coming back to the ring. So what would she be doing in your corner now? Um, you know, just just being a part of, you know, just uh, helping out, being, you know, like a co-trainer. Um, she's actually training fighters back in San Antonio. Okay. And, uh, you know, so I'm super, you know, super stoked for my sister. You know, she's um, she's somebody who has been with me, you know, since, you know, the very start of this journey, you know, since we were kids. And, uh, we you know, we, we grew up through all, all these years, you know, being there for each other. And, um, you know, I'm super happy, you know, just knowing that you know, I'm going to have her in, um, in my corners now also. Now, you were one of the first, uh, I want to say, I don't know if I can remember any other brother-sister, you know, like obviously the Klitschko's are the brother-fighting champions, and then the Charlos were the brother fight. And you and your sister, I believe, were the first brother-sister, but now Fundora and his sister, how does it feel to see another duo come into the sport and uh, kind of achieve and try to accomplish the same goals together? 
That's awesome, man. Um, you know, and anytime I see, you know, a brother, sister, you know, duo, you know, whether they're professional, whether they're, whether they're just in the boxing gym, um, you know, I always, you know, I, I like to shed light on it, you know, just, um, you know, show that that relationship, you know, a lot of positivity because I know exactly, you know, what what it was like, you know, for me and my sister coming up and, um, and really uh, for years, you know, feeling like we only had each other, you know, that, um, as far as you know, having somebody to relate to and just having somebody just knowing this sport, you know, how you do. Um, so, you know, like seeing fighters like um, Fondora and his sister, you know, that's, 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 that's badass. So, you know, if you um, if you ask me, you know, that was something me and my sister had always dreamed of. And uh, she, no, she no longer fights. But, you know, I'm still, I'm, you know, so proud of everything that she was able to accomplish, you know, in, in and out of the ring. You know, she's an amazing mother. Now she's, you know, coaching. She's able, you know, to pass on, you know, the, like, knowledge that she has, you know, from being inside the ring, you know, since she was eight or nine years old. So uh, do you guys have a gym together? Is she training out of the local gym that you started? Uh, what's the situation? If anybody in the San Antonio tra area wants to train with your sister, how do they go about it? And what gym is she, you know, teaching out of? Yeah, she um back in San Antonio, she trains um the fighters that she works with out of the the Jim Davies Entertainment. Okay. That's um yeah, so that, all right, that's, that's where uh Kid Schofield trains a lot. Yeah, yeah. So that's where um whenever I'm back home, San Antonio too, that's where that's where I train also. Nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He's got a nice facility. Nice okay. facility. Yeah, they're doing great things down there in San Antonio, Davies. Yeah, it's like man, the Davies Entertainment is like. Rob Derrick's Fantasy Factory, but for like boxing, they got a they got a recording studio in there. They got a like a a, a resale shop. They got a basketball court. Man, they got all types of stuff in that in that facility. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow, it's cool. So, uh, getting into your 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 boxing career, obviously you've transitioned into welterweight, and uh, you've you fought two very popular names in in your career, two different people that um, at separate times have been considered punchers. Um, let's start there. Uh, what was the more difficult fight for you, Thurman or Tank Davis? Um, they're both, you know, difficult fights to begin with, um, just in, uh, in their own ways. Um, you know, they're, they're both world champions and former world champions uh, for a reason. And, um, you know, so when I took both of those fights, they were literally the... Um, the the toughest um the toughest the toughest opportunity that was presented to me and um i've just always been you know meaning the, that there was another option on the table yeah yeah there, i mean there, there always is and um so i mean when the fight was presented with tank um you know i told my manager luis uh, uh, right away like man like let's let's make that happen and that was around the time when i was going to be moving up from from 140 but i was like man i was like i i, I can make it one more time uh, because I knew the potential that that fight had, and I, you know, and um, I'm confident. I'm confident in my abilities. I'm confident in my skills. Um, I mean, I've been boxing since I was six years old. You know, if I'm not um, comfortable with stepping in there with um, with whoever, you know, and and holding my own, you know, why why have I been doing this so long? Um, so I mean, I've, I've never been afraid to test myself. You know, so that was the reason why you know I took you know these past two big fights. You know, and then when I moved up. Uh, my first fight was, you know, Keith Thurman, which um, was a fight that, you know, everybody was saying like, oh, why are you taking this fight? You know, you should have had a tune up, blah, blah, blah. But again, you know, um, I'm, I'm in this sport, you know, to test myself. And, you know, I had confidence, you know, going into that fight, you know, that again, like I could hold my own with uh, with whoever. And, um, you know, so I came up short on two, you know, really competitive fights and, you um, you know, and there's still so much for me to accomplish. You know, in um in my career, you know, so I'm just uh, I'm just I'm just excited, looking forward. You hurt him to the body, <clears throat> similar to Pac. No, I was I was just gonna ask Go about for it. it, champ. Uh, when you saw that mouthpiece come out, a it's it's almost like uh you got to be thinking like what is he doing <laughs> but at the same time like okay this is my opportunity or what's going through your mind because Ness finds it very smart you know what i'm saying take yeah. the mouthpiece out instead of taking a knee I, wait wait wait, wait. Or, he's 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 you're, you're totally misquoting what I, I don't think it's smart 
I think it shows that he is uh, a superior talent, that with guys like yourself and Pacquiao, he can take this mouthpiece out. He's showing you that he's hurt, and he still doesn't get knocked down or get a 10-8 round uh, where, where guys like Cotto have taken a knee. It's like, wait, I'm hurt. Let me go ahead and take a mm -hmm. knee. Thurman has those legs. He stays away from you guys. You hurt him, and he puts on the legs. So um, I don't think it's smart to take it out. I just think that he shows us a, a, a different level once that mouthpiece comes nah, in. It was, it, was, it was definitely a, a veteran move. And uh, I remember beating the fight, and um, I, I know it hurt into the body, you know, because I could see in his face, I could see in his demeanor, you know, how, mm -hmm. how Ness said, you know, he started to move, which is, like, fucking crazy because, I mean, when you get hit with a body shot, it's hard to move. And then, you know, I see him, like, like you know, like, clawing at, like, his face with, with his glove. And I'm like, man, what the fuck is he doing? You know, <laughs> trying to chase him down, trying to get him. And then I see him pull his mouthpiece. And I was like, I was like, oh, man, this fucking dude. Like, it's, it's smart. And it, it really is like, a smart move, you know, especially, you know, when when you look at boxing. Um, you know, like how you said, it saves you from getting that 10-8 that, that round. And, you know, now it's, it's, it's going to give you time. And man, it's it's a very it's, it's a veteran move. And um, when I saw him do that, I was just like, damn, man, like, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, you can respect it, you know. If you do, if you don't, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, it, it it buys him time, and it, you know, it saves him, you know, from from getting that that ten eight round. You know, so I mean, it's smart. Now you obviously seen that Manny Pacquiao <clears throat> did the same exact thing you did before you did it, right? Like you seen him take his mouthpiece out after Pacquiao hurt him to the body. Mm -hmm. So going into the fight, was that the game plan to attack the body or was it, you know, whatever punch lands and whatever punch gets the job done, that's the one that matters? Um, I think for me going into to any fight, you know, I've, just, I, I've always been, you know, um, a, a fan of, you know, body shots and body punches and, uh, you know, just investing in the body early on. Um, I've just always been, um, you know, that fighter. You know, I've always... I always loved, you know, stopping people with a with a liver shot. Just, you know, the whole reaction, every, everything about it. It's it's beautiful, and it's one of those things that um, only certain boxers can relate to. You know, with taking a liver shot. You know, it's a it's a hell of a shot. You know, I took that shot when I fought Tank, mm. and uh, man, it took everything, you know, for me to you know try to get up from. You know, so I know exactly, you know, what that does to fighters, and you know, um, it it is you know, has always been one of, one of my favorite punches. Since you're talking about loving that liver shot, um, there was some controversy in that fight. And it sounds like maybe it was Thurman, because hearing you say that you want to paralyze people with the liver shot, I'm assuming you would want the 8-ounce gloves and not the 10-ounce gloves. So there is a back and forth. He blames you for wanting 10s, and I'm pretty sure we've seen videos of you saying he wanted 10s. Um, who do you think would have benefited from having eight ounce gloves? Mm, that's hard to say, um, but you know, I mean, you know, just in general, you're going into that fight. You know, I was just told like, oh, you know, you're gonna you're gonna use tens of this fight. So I was like, I was like, okay, cool. Like, I mean, for me, it, it never mattered. You know, whether the the gloves were fucking sixteen ounces or what. Like, man, I'm, I'm gonna go in there and work. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, who knows if. Um, you know, that, that conversation can go back and forth, you know, whether him saying, like, oh, if he had the eights, you know, he could have stopped me. Or, uh, you know, I, I could say the same thing. You know, if I had the eights, you know, maybe, you know, I would have actually dropped him. You know, maybe I would have hurt him more. Um, so it's, it's just one of those things that it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to go back and forth. And for me, I can make a case for the both of you, right? Like, <clears throat> I could see you as the smaller fighter moving up, wanting the eights so that your power – stings more i could see him wanting the tens because he is the fighter that had injured hands he claims to have an injured elbow and hand from the danny fight from the danny so fight. but i could also see you being the smaller fighter moving up like uh, let me test the waters with a uh, welterweight with bigger gloves so i never took a side because logically there's arguments for the both of you to want tens or not want tens no i was actually uh I was actually at the press conference, and I remember going from Thurman to Barrios, like, on stage. I'm like, yo, he just said it was you. <laughs> he just said it was you. But, uh, Champ, obviously you're out here working. You're in camp. Is there a potential time of year? 
that fuck you're a, coming back. Fuck a date at this point. Can we, <laughs> can we get a potential quarter? Is there a month? <laughs> yeah, a quarter. Damn, not even yeah, a month. Yeah. Okay, Danny. I'm, but, I'm just saying, they gave us, uh, they announced Charlo Zoo, you feel me, in quarter two of 2022 fiscal year for 2023 fiscal year. Quarter one, I'm like, Jesus Christ, they're like really preparing. So, yeah, champ, man. do you have a quarter? Oh, uh, man, you know, I'm uh, I'm out here working, you know, I'm I'm getting ready, you know, for, for whatever, you know, that they bring up. Um I was I was hoping to get something before the, the year was up, but right now it's looking like um it's gonna be early uh twenty twenty three if anything. But um but you know, like I said, I mean that was part of the reason why I, I came out, out here so early, you know, just to start working, get back to work. Uh I'm excited, like like I said, man, you know, I have still have so much, you know, to prove, so much, you know, to show fight fans. And, you know, there's so many, you know, great fights, you know, that, you know, are, um, you know, to be, you know, you know potentially made. And, um, you know, at, looking at the what's away landscape, man, there's... Yeah, let's... It's let, crazy, like, fucking talent. Let's talk about... Uh, That's yeah. where I was going to go next. Let's talk about I want to play landscape. the elimination game, right? Uh, obviously, because now I feel like I can't put any fight past you. I can't second guess you. Like, you went from Tank to Thurman. You you said it yourself. There were people that told you take a tune up, um, but I do want you to eliminate Boots. Is he an option next? Because he's putting devil emojis and that he's locked in. Is Mario Barrios crazy enough to have that sort of schedule? And why would you do that? Honestly, I'm not asking you to do that. I would be definitely on another video telling people that Mario was crazy for going tank, Thurman, Boots. Uh, but what is your thoughts on that? I mean, on 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 any fighter, you know. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm willing to take to take any fight, you know, whether it's Boos, whether it's it's whoever, you know. He's he's a great fighter. Um, the thing he's you know one of the fighters that you know he's only getting better with time. Um, so I mean, yeah, I think you know for sure that you know that is going to be a fight that you know that's going to be made at at welterweight, you know, at some point. Um, as far as you know, who's next? I'm I'm not too sure. You know, I haven't been presented with any names. Like I said, I'm just I'm, I'm just getting ready. You know, I'm just, um, just trying to trying to elevate my game. So you know, whenever I step in there again, you know, I'm, I'm looking uh, sensational. Would you be opposed or open to a Josecito Lopez? Anybody, he just yeah. fought Cody Crowley. <laughs> I think that's a good fight. Cody yeah, yeah. Cody is young, up and coming, welterweight. He's undefeated. He didn't get the stoppage he thought he would get over Josecito. Josecito's always near and around the rankings. He's a former champion. Uh, what's your thoughts on a fight like that? Oh, uh, you know, like like him also, man. Uh, I'll be honest; it, it doesn't matter who you bring up to me. I'm I'm with it. You okay. know, there 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 ain't nobody that um, I have ever said no to. You know, whenever you know a fight was brought up. Whether you know it's somebody just asking you know oh would you fight this guy whether it's it's my manager you know asking like oh you know do you want to fight him or him I'm always you know willing you know to take you know the 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 bigger risk you know the more the more risky fight. Mm. Well, that means you would want Cody Crowley, but I won't ask you if you take it because you already <laughs> uh, explained that. Do you have anything else, or you want me to go to the people? No, I mean, uh, I honestly. Just wanted his some more thoughts on the welterweight division, champ, because you know things were kind of held up, and as you said, right now the the welterweight landscape is filled with talented guys. Like a lot, we there's a lot of a lot of talent at 147. Uh where do you think everything goes from here? Do you think we ever see Errol Spence Bud Crawford? Does that fight ever happen? <clears throat> I hope so. You know, I think I think uh, I think that's you know that's that's everybody's answer. You know, they've been on um, on on top of the division for so long. You know, it's just been a fight that has been you know just just ticking. You know, just waiting to happen. And um, you know, I think all of us thought that we were gonna get it. Um, you know, sometime around December or maybe January. But um, I think that you know just uh, fell apart in its own. And, um, but, you know, who knows, you know, maybe, you know, hopefully, you know, sometime in 2023. Uh, How does a fight with, I'm, and I hate that you've already answered, like, yo, I'll fight anybody, but maybe you give us a different facial expression for different names, like Roly. Does that excite you? 
Um, I mean, again, you know, I'll fight whoever. You know, Roly is is um a, a a good friend of mine. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. But um, I mean, you know, it's boxing. You know, it's business. If if that was you know to ever be made, you know, um, I know you know it would be it would be handled as such. But um. I mean, you know, like I like the, that. I like that. So, so is that a bigger fight than Jose Cito Lopez? Hell yeah! Let him answer. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, I think I, I think it would be, but you know, it's not something that you know I'm trying to put out there. It's not something that you know I'm, I'm trying to be like, oh, like I want that fight. Like, yeah, nah, yeah. like Roly, like you're saying, no, he, he he's he the a, homie. He's he the has homie. a homie of mine, and I, I want the best for him. For sure. And um, but I mean, if that was there happen, you know, it's just Yo, it's a business. He's a big Yo, name. Hold That's on, hold why. On, hold on. Abram's your boy, right? Yeah, yeah. Yo, yeah. talk That's to my him. Dog. Yo, we knew. We knew. We bet. We bet. Abram, what? we knew. What? Abram Martinez. Where is he going with this? No, I just, I just want your thoughts on, on, on the upset. Obviously, he got the opportunity short notice. Oh, and, no, Brian. No, you talking about oh, Brian, Brian Mendoza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Abram, yeah, yeah. Abram also. Abram, yeah, that, Abram that, is that, Broly's boy, though. though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Abram, Abram but he's also. talking Brian Mendoza yeah, coming oh, in on late notice for Jason Rosario upset. I fucking knew whoever they put in front of him, like whatever like opportunity that was gonna present itself uh, for him, he, he was gonna he was gonna dominate, man. Um, it, it's it's crazy because I actually I had Abram and Brian. Um, I took them out there to the bay to help me get ready for the for the Thurman fight. Mm. And you know the Abram and Brian, man, they're fucking you know they're up and coming. They're like they're hungry. They're fucking they're super talented fighters and they're fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're fun, bro. They both like they're not like they're, they're per, they got good personality. Yeah, yeah, Abram yeah. loves to joke, and and Brian, you know, he's he's outspoken. So I yeah. like them both. Nah, man, same. Um, I like. I mean, I've had so many camps, you know, where I've, I've you know I've had people fly in, you know, I had uh, countless sparring partners, but the like relationship I had with those dudes, man, is super tight, you know, which made you know coming to Vegas you know that much more easier, you know, just knowing I had you know my my people here, you know, from Abram to Brian, you know. To Joey, his brother Bobby, um, you know everybody, you know, all of my my people here. But yeah, but Brian, man, going out there and like handling business, how he did, man, I was so stoked for him. I was, I was there in in Minneapolis. Oh, uh, I saw that. Yeah, that, that. Did you bet though? I didn't, but yo, we bet. But only because I'm not I, I'm not a betting. And person. I'm Dominican, bro. <laughs> but I, Jason, he ain't been looking good, yeah. bro. Jason needs your father, and and I I went to. When the, he trained with the, Herman. The, the Dominican doctor. He does. He needs the Dominican, <laughs> needs doctor. Dominican doctor. Wow. Oh, that's yo, the new name. They love me. Come here. I'll take care of you. Yeah. Well, they're they're calling for Jason's retirement, but mm -hmm. like if someone can make sure he trains, then maybe, but Yeah, I don't know. I I feel like man, like Jason's he's you know him too. He probably still got, you know, a lot of fight left, a lot of great fights you know, to be made. But um Oh yeah, the main the topic was brought up because of Brian. Yeah, but now nah, Brian just went out there and handled fucking business. I was, uh, you know, w I was been working out with him and everything with with Abram. Um, you know, since I've been out here in Vegas, and like I said I I knew the the shape that he was in, mm -hmm. and like I said, I I knew whoever they put in front of him, you know, he was gonna go out there and handle business. Bro, and so was, did I. The minute I seen that, I told this guy, I said, bro. Same trainer, same game plan. Those two dudes are stable mates. Once Gomez was out and, and Mendoza was in, I'm like, wait, mm -hmm. it, it, Ishmael Salas trains them both. Yeah. You know? So I, I was all in. I bet on them for sure. I got a couple of questions from the people. Ruin a 504, which is New Orleans. He says, I hear you're in camp right now. So any word on who you'll be facing? You kind of answered that. Unless you want to say anything else, we can move I, on. I do want your thoughts because, uh, you know, you talk about the work in Vegas. What changes uh, now that camp's in Vegas? Because we feel like the toughest work always takes place in Vegas. As a fighter, as a former world champion, do you agree? In the gym. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, uh, you know, that actually, you know, touches on the question that y'all asked me earlier. You know, like, why, you know, why that move here? And it's like, um, you know, the, the Bay Area, man, I got so much love for the Bay Area. You know, it, it really, you know, helped me. You know, develop into the young man that I am now. You know, from being out there you know, when I was 21 to now, learning how to be on my own, all that. But 
the the one of the main issues with being out there was like man there wasn't a lot of work like if, if and I, you got to fly it in exactly so i would have to fly it in you know i would have to you know put them up in in a hotel um camp expenses out yeah, here like, there's unlimited work yeah, everyone like, got a gym yeah and and and, and i ain't got to pay for it not only that but like the properties on airbnbs you know wherever i do stay you know, that's a lot cheaper so um i feel like you know just for boxing in general man there's no better place than you know than you know than here do you hate that it's getting cold or do you not mind it? Oh, I fucking hate it. Me too, <laughs> bro. Me too. Uh, hey, man, I, I can't lie. That's been like one of the biggest uh, like adjustments is like trying to get used to the climate here, bro. like how fucking dry it is and, how, and then now like how cold it is. I bro, am, I waking up to it. 34 in Vegas, I'm like, this is not supposed to be happening, yeah, bro. It's like crazy. It. Um, before we get into these people's questions, uh, is that a rental or you got your car brought up here? Because I'm into muscle cars. My 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 handle is Nest GTO. I've had the, the GTO, the Camaro. Now I got the vet. And I see you have... I was going to get that car. Yeah. Wild body. But then the, I seen the fucking Corvette. And I'm like, no, I got to get the vet. Mm -hmm. But I plan on coming back to that. Yeah, yeah. And I loved your car. If that's yours yeah. or just your toy for while you're out that here. Was, yeah, no, that, that was that was just a toy, you know. Oh, for, wow. For so you just while. rented it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I it was nice, so, man. I fucking, I, I loved it. Yeah. So what do you have back home? What are you into? Uh, I got a, a Mercedes AMG back home. And then okay. I, I got a Subaru uh, Crosstrek that I actually um, got shipped out here. Um, I got the Subaru because it fits my, my lifestyle a lot more, especially back home. I got my dog. I like to be outdoors all the time, you know, biking. So you're gonna take at, it to the, the desert and shit? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Mount no, I, we were, I was out there with shit. Sean Porter the other day. Like Sean on his birthday, he's such a great guy. He took me with him on his birthday to do like doom buggies. Mm. And there's people out there in their real cars, like yeah. in their real oh, yeah. trucks. Hell yeah, bro. Yeah, going 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 straight from there to fucking work. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy out there. All right, all right. So uh, we got Cisco Promotions. I think he might be from New Jersey. Says, uh, what's next for you, champ? It seems like the boxing business is using your name to elevate the next big name. FYI, your fight outfit into the tank fight was fire. That is true. So we'll double back to that. Don't let us forget. We got to find out what, what inspired that ring outfit mm -hmm. for the tank fight. It felt like a peacock. You know, peacocks think they badass, poke their chest out. I loved it. Um, but, yeah, again, another question basically asking you what's yeah, next. Man, the, so that's what everyone's been asking me, man. Since. So you've already answered that. So tell us yeah. about the ring outfit. What inspired that? Was that a – because I know you you made the vest from the press conference yeah, for yeah. Tank. So the, the I know you vest. got fashion <laughs> in you, too. Fences, yeah. Yeah, uh, now nah, you know the whole you know my fire outfits you know are always you know and you know heavy on indigenous you know inspired. Um, I, I like to you know you know to show you know that old like um um Mexica you know type of uh, type of armor. Um, so that you know that, that was the reason you know for I mean the reason why I'm becoming all the chest piece and everything, but you know with the with the tank fight you know the colors um. I wanted to do as close to the uh, Fiesta Spurs colors as as I could, and you know, and uh, you know, as flamboyant and everything as it was, you know, that just went hand in hand, you know, with everything that I was trying to do, especially with just as big of a fight as that was, you know, me going out there to Atlanta, you know, and fighting Tank there, uh, you know, everything you know that played into that fight, you know, it was um, it was it, it did bring a lot of attention, and uh, you know, I I think it was the perfect you know uh, fight fit, you know, for that fight. Did the crowd in that fight play into your performance at all? Did it affect your performance at all? Nah, it didn't. Um, I remember even, even the ring walk, man. We had um, some um, some danzantes from uh, from out there in San Jose, and um, I was supposed to have music actually with with the ring walk, but for whatever reason, it, it didn't play. I don't know if that was you know purposely or <laughs> or what. Getting but, you tight before the yeah, fight. Yeah, yeah, but it, it didn't matter, man. You know, like like I said, you know, because we had the um the calpuli um that was out there, you know, with with the drums and everything, and then they were just drumming and just brought that intensity. And I mean, of course, you know, I was fighting, you know, Tank in Atlanta, and uh, you know, I was in you know hostile territory. Basically, you know, the whole ring walk, man, was just you know people were just just, just talking shit. But but it was cool, though, man. You know, because afterwards, you know, the fight went how it went. You know, I felt like me and Tank, we we really, you know, brought out, you know, like the the best in, the best in each other. Um, 
you know, as far as, you know, like boxing goes. And, um, you know, after the fight, there was the, there was, there was mad respect, you know, from from the crowd and everything, you know, on the on the way back. But um, but now I don't I don't think the you know the the crowd or anything played um played any any type of effect, you know, with the, with the fight. The reason I asked is because I was there and uh, <clears throat> man, outside of like Wilder Fury one, I think that's like one of the most electric fights I've been to. That stadium was crazy. There were so many stars there. Like, I, I talk about that fight all the time because of the, the crowd. The ambiance, everything. Yes, yeah, bro. No, there yeah. were so many Lamborghinis outside. <laughs> it was crazy. I'm telling you, you don't understand. It was crazy. Yeah, it was wild. Yeah, no, it was a pretty amazing fight. You know, that, that, that I haven't, because wasn't it like 20,000? It was, it was, it I was think the last 20,000 I've been to was when Gennady fought Lemieux at the Garden, and it did not feel like that. Like, that shit was a party over there. And the women that go to those fights at that in Atlanta, that was crazy. It was like a fashion show. Dr. Yeah. J was at your fight. That was crazy. It was crazy. I'm telling you, it was, it was a big, was big fight. So we got David Maldonado, New York City. He says, what's up, champ? I kind of asked you this already. Who punches harder, Tank Davis or Keith Thurman? I'm be honest, man. I hate being asked that question. Uh, I get asked that question all, all the all the fucking time, and uh, every time you know people ask me, I always tell them like, man, it, it don't feel good to getting cracked by nobody, you know, at that level. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I will say, you know, there's only one fight where I, I touch the canvas, you know, so I feel like that's that's self-explanatory. That's fair. Yeah, man. Um, I thought they were gonna make that Tank Thurman fight. Now that you fought both of them, does Tank have the ability and power to fight Thurman? Cause I don't know if you know, but Leonard and Thurman, you they were going at it. Yeah, for yeah, I saw that. Um, he started I, that. Nah, not me. I don't know that there was actually you no know, like that that fight even being talked about. Nah, it, I mean you know Thurman's like send the contract. Leonard said he would send a contract. None, none, it, nothing ever came from it, but yeah, there was talks. But instead of fighting Tank, it ended up being you, but you fought both. How do you think that fight plays out if it happens? Mm. It's hard to say, man. I don't know. Like, one, like, what, what weight would that even be? Well to like, seven. Like, uh, well to weight. No catch weight. Yeah, I don't. Even, I don't even see like. I don't even see Tank like going 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 up there. Oh like, really? I mean, yeah. No, I mean, for for what reason? You know, I think if anything, you know, forty would be his next move, and there's there's a lot of like big fights that he could fight there. Um, so yeah, I don't know. But you know that welterweight division, you know the checks is different at welterweight. Yeah, it's the glamour division. So if That's you're true. gonna jump up, you know, you do, do you? If there's anybody he can fight at welterweight, do you think it would be Thurman, or is there a, a easier fight that you yeah, think I'm, Tank could yeah, take at I'm welterweight? A, I'm gonna be like. I do agree that welterweights the glamour division, but Tank's, the money division. But and Tank is look the Thurman's uh, Crawford's the getting ten yeah, million. But Tank's the money fight though. Exactly why you go to welterweight to make a bigger check. You he's the first of his kind. Let's be real. There's no pay per view star at thirty five. That's new. Crawford wasn't a pay per view star at thirty five. He didn't this fight is, pay per view. Right? But that's, yeah, my yeah, yeah, no, that's my that's point. That's my point. He's new, so Thank if he you. brings those talents to welterweight, which is already the, you know, just saying. But moving on, we got James Valdez, who's also from San Antonio, Texas. He says, Wilder versus Ruiz, who wins and how? Oh, uh, man, <laughs> Wilder got, like, ridiculous fucking power. Like, it's, sure it's, <laughs> it's almost, like, like not fair, but I think, you know, his size. He said it's almost like not fair. <laughs> It's almost not fair. Like, man, like, his last fight, like, he barely touched, dude. Like, he didn't even put anything into that. Like, no. yeah, and, and th that is a, is a tough-ass fighter. Um, I don't know. I, I think Waters, you know, just his size, his length, it, it might be just, you know, too much for um for for Ruiz to deal with. Uh, but, you know, man, I, I, I love Ruiz. I love the fighter that he is and everything he brings to all of his fights. But I think just um from the physical stature, it, it would be a very difficult fight for him. Uh, ironically enough, from Alabama, James Benita says, uh, so I'm looking at the WBC rankings and thinking of opponents to put you back in the mix, and I feel a fight with Boots would set you up. Have 
there have been talks about that fight and what skills you have allow you to feel that you can beat him easily. Wow. Think you can beat him easily? Yeah, I don't think anybody could beat him easily. Like I said, man, he's a he's a hell of a fighter. Uh, like I said, that's a that's a hell of a fight to be made, you know, whenever you know that time is. Um so yeah, I mean if there's every time you know um if it happens soon, then then it does. Nebraska Canna says, Sup, Mario, do you have another fight scheduled for this year? Thanks for coming on the show. So you said possibly next year. Yeah, yeah. I was hoping for this year. And like I, I was I was trying to get, you know, back in there ASAP, but you know, it's looking like if anything, January. And you don't think that there's a possibility, because isn't there a Frank Martin card special edition December 17th versus Michelle Rivera? Oh yeah, yeah. There is that one. Uh nah, but it, it too it soon. Be, yeah. I got the best dad ever in Baltimore. He says, I think I asked you this too. You guys are slow. Who was the more difficult, Tank or Thurman? And who do you think is Tank's toughest task? So I guess just the second half, because you answered the first half. Who do you think is Tank's toughest fight? Well, they asked who. The last one was who hit harder. Who made you think No, no, more? no. But I asked them that as oh. well. Like, what was the more difficult fight, Tank or Thurman? Mm. And he said they oh, were both the, difficult. The, the more difficult fight was definitely Tank. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. I think I mean it's not wrong. Like the Thurman, the Thurman wasn't wasn't an easy fight. But I remember being in the fight with Tank, and that whole fight, I was just like, like I was just thinking, like I was like it was it was it was a crazy game of like reaction, like um as as opposed to like with Thurman, I know, in that fight, like I really like fucked myself because once I found out like that I could hurt him and that I could take his power. Like I, I, would, I just got hungry on just like, like trying to like stop him, like trying to hurt him with one shot. Mm. And you know where as, as to think, um, when I fought Tank, that that whole fight, I was just thinking, I was just like, just like trying to be on top of everything. Was it because you, you felt what's coming back at you had to be more careful because what's coming back at you with Tank? Yeah, man, he was, it was just so quick and so, so elusive, man. It was just kind of like you know, you see him like here, then you see him there, and. Like, and then the size difference too between us, he was way under, under my punches to begin with. So it was just like, I just knew I had to be like, man, like super careful. Mm. And, um, you know, with Thurman too, though, I mean, I, I know I had to be careful with him, but, and, um, but, you know, his shots and like, a lot of stuff, I was able to see more and I was able to, you know, to try to, uh, like I could cover up, I could block, but, you know, even, even the stuff though, that like, that did sneak in though with Thurman, you know, like he's, he's, he's a, he's a hard puncher. Sure. sure, champ. I got Lids Low in Decatur, Georgia. Says, what's up, champ? Now I know you said you will take any fight. If Boots sends you a contract, oh my God. it's a definite <laughs> yes that you would sign it? Question mark, question mark. Remember, you're live on the Boxing Voice, and remember what people say on here. <laughs> Salute, champ. So, oh, that's what he said. <laughs> yeah, he's saying that. So basically, they're live listening. So yeah, he sent yeah. this in 17 minutes ago, and he just wants to reiterate, if they send you a contract, would you take it? I also want to reiterate that you should say no. Get a tune-up. Let yeah. You know, Boots is on his own trajectory. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, both of us are. You know, like I got, I got, you know, my my team, my managers, and everything for all that. Like I said, man, I, I'll fight whoever. Um, I, I don't think there's any reason, you know, to keep on trying to press that. Mm hmm. Oscar D, uh, what's up, champ? Thanks for coming on uh, the best boxing podcast on the planet. With that being said, would you entertain a? I asked you that. You guys are slow. All right, next one. A fight with Roly since he's been calling out 147 pounders. <laughs> Obviously, Roley Oscar. Out everybody. <laughs> Oscar, he explained that Roly is one of the homies, but if they offered him the fight, he wouldn't mind taking it. I got Victor Banuelos. I think it's in Cali. He says, what's up, champ? Fighters like you are so important to the game. Guys like yourself, Sean Porter, Austin Trout, the Gabe Brazados, who get in there with anyone. Wish you well on the rest of your career, champ. My question is, what are some of the great things that both Tank and Thurman do in the ring? And also, what are some of the mistakes that they do that can possibly be exposed in future fights? I also think a fight with you and Adrian Granados would be a banger. A good comeback fight. That is a good fight. That is a good fight. No? What do you think? He looked at you. You didn't like that? Oh, because you're from Chicago. He's from Chicago. Yeah, I mean, I think that... It'd be so you like, want to save Granados? Yeah, I think it's a, too much of a tune-up. Nah, for but Mario. it's good because they're both moving up from 140. 
Granados has fluctuated. You know, he fought Danny at 47, but he's his, you know, his best days was when he beat Amir Iman at 40 or 35. Mm, 40, yeah. You know. So yeah, his question was, oh, that was um, a long one. Yeah. My question is, what are some of the great things Tank and Thurman do? And what are some of the mistakes that they do that you think could be exposed? Um I think, man, even with both of them, man, one one thing that you know is great with both is their their movement. Um, like I said, man, Tank is super elusive, you know, super quick, you know, with his um with his angles and just like moving and um just like let, letting shots, you know, come off. Uh, and Tank also, I mean, uh, Thurman, Thurman has man some some good ass legs, you know. He's 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 on those things, you know, the the whole fight. And um, so he he was a fighter, you know, that was really hard in you know, order to just you know to just catch, um, you know, like stationary. So the last one is coming from a fellow Texan, Brandon in Houston. Says thank you for coming on the show, Mario. Appreciate you coming on. And as a fellow Texan, I am always pulling for you. I'm giving you the stage to say whatever you've always wanted to say to the lazy, out of shape, highly opinionated fan on the internet who has never taken a punch, yet remains highly critical of fighters and their performances from their couch. <laughs> uh, man, I'm, I'm I'm always you know commenting on uh, like you know uh, couch commentators. You know, I always got the most to say. You know, they're um, I and I still get this you know to this day. The other day, uh, the article was posted, you know, that I was, you know, um, excited, you know, you know, for, you know, what's to come and all this stuff. And then the comments, of course, you know, comments are always going to be the comments. It's always, you know, some. Again, Haters. Yeah, some. Again, yeah, yeah, couch comments here just saying some shit. And it's like, man, like these, these dudes can never, you know, step foot in the ring and do what, what we do. And at that too, man, these dudes, they, they will never, you know, come up to us in person and, and tell us these things to our face. So I mean, even me myself, man, I, I I never I never you know paid too much attention to to like any of that. Um, again, I, I focus on what I'm doing, you know. Um, like I like I said, you know, all that is just I'm you know just getting in the best shape that I can, you know, trying to ele elevate my game. So whenever I come back, you know, I look um I look great, and you know I'm just you know, I'm excited, you know, for for what's to come. So we've seen the the birth of YouTube boxing, right? Influencer boxing. Uh, Terrible. <laughs> on, the, on the back of that question and your, your answer, would you want to see uh, journalists, guys like myself and Danny, the people that criticize you, should they get in the ring? The Dan Rayfields, Michael Coppingers, I don't know, I'll help you with some names. Any Keith Eidex, who else <laughs> writes out there? Keith Ioli, no, is it? Kevin Ioli? Yeah. You got your boxing egos. I mean, I don't know. Pick yeah, one. Yeah. What nah, do you I mean, think? Marcos Villegas. Marcos Villegas. <laughs> uh, Ellie I mean, Segback. Yeah. Ellie Segback. I would love to see it, but you know, uh, I don't know. I feel like all of that too is. Just, I would like to see it just on like a platform where it's not taking the opportunities, you know, from fighters that, you know, have you know given you know their life to this sport. Um, you know, for those opportunities, you know, if, if it was his own like different fight card, you know, on this on this you know different app or whatever, you know, like, like yeah, cool, you know, whatever. It's an, it, it it is entertainment, but you know, when you're seeing on these big you know headlining cards, you know, Showtime and all these, then it's like ah, oh, come on, man, like I'm not, like, I, I don't want to see that on like on a major card. So you're not feeling Jake? Sounds like it's Jake bothering you. <laughs> nah, no, no, um, I mean. Uh, He's he's doing he's doing great for himself, man. And you know, um, I just think that, you know the whole like him calling himself like the best you know fighter and all this stuff. Like man, when he hasn't been there with somebody you know an actual fighter or an actual boxer, um, I just think it's bold. But you know, you again, got, that's, you gotta that's give a, it to him though, man. Yeah. He's he's I mean, giving he's so many. Yeah, he's yeah. giving, but yeah, uh, this aside is, of all that, yeah, this is probably what you don't know. He's right. giving so many people opportunities, right? Like we just saw Montana Love. I know you saw him throw the guy over the ring yeah, and shit. Bro, that was that was Montana's third fight with Eddie. He got a three fight deal because Jake put him on his undercard when and he knocked what, out Ivan Branchek, former yeah, yeah. IBF champion. You, you know, uh, uh, Amanda I mean, I, Amanda got a million dollars versus Katie Taylor yeah, first. Yeah. Like man, I take my hat head off to Jake because and not just the, I not think just, he brings uh, opportunities to fighters. Bro. Remember like Regis too. 
Regis, mm-hmm. before yeah. that, he gave Regis an opportunity on uh, the Triller card, and now Regis is signed to Probellum because of it. Um, that's cool, but I mean, at the same time, though, man, like those, like those are like they have bigger opportunities now. But I mean, there were still great fighters before. But yeah, but, but they I, didn't have the representation. Yeah. But I get you. Um, we are gonna cut to promo so that we could take a picture with Mario, and we'll be back with our family. family. Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Help us get to that million subscribers. We're on the road to a million, and. Obviously, we have other great content on our Patreon channel. So since this video is over, head on over to our Patreon and check out all the exclusive content or right here on our YouTube members.